so you competed in the bobsled at five consecutive Olympic Games, starting mm -hmm. with the 1988 uh, Calgary Games through 2002 Salt Lake City Games. You're also obviously a passionate member of the IOC. Mm -hmm. um, explain why um, one of your most prized Olympic possessions is your grandfather's Olympic ring uh, due to diamond skulls, I believe. Uh, this was not the diamond skulls uh, ring that, 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 that was kept uh, by other members of the family, but it was his ring from, from, from the 1920 games in, in Antwerp. And uh, my mother had it and she, and she gave it to me for, I think it was also my 21st birthday. And so I, I keep that uh, uh, very, very safely uh, put away. I've I've worn it a couple of times just for uh, just to be able to say that I did wear it. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, but I think that's that's also one of the inspirations for and my my determination to try to become an Olympic athlete. And I could have my stories mixed here, but isn't the significance of that ring um, that he was not allowed into this world-renowned Diamond Skulls uh, rowing event and uh, because he was a brick layer and they said he had an unfair advantage and then he ends up at the Olympics beating the guy who won the Diamond Skulls? Yes, of course, uh, but that, that, that's not why he got that ring. Right, but, but, right. But the fact that he was an Olympian and the fact that he did compete successfully and he was a three-time gold medalist, uh, but that he did beat uh, in the single Skulls finals, uh, the. The rower who, who who had won in Hilly, I think that was that was sweet revenge, but also the fact that uh, that his son, my uncle Jack, uh, was a double diamond skull winner at Henley in 1947 and 49. I think that was uh, that was an even uh, even even sweeter revenge. What led you to competing in the bobsled at the Olympics in the first place? I I, I had seen uh, I was able to. Uh, see the sport of bobsledding at different occasions, and, and one one was at the Olympics in at Lake Placid in 1980. So I, I kind of said to, to myself, I, I, maybe I'd like to try that someday. And, and that opportunity came when when I was on a skiing holiday in St. Moritz in Switzerland, and uh, they were offering, as they still do, uh, guest rides for for uh, pe people who wanted to it out with an experienced driver, of course. So I did a run that year, and, and I thought it was like a ride and a uh, like a roller coaster ride with a, with a little more cold air on your face. Uh, and but I I didn't think of pursuing it much in a competitive way until the following year, where I I went back to St. Moritz and, and uh, did another guest ride, and then I I met. A, a, a Swiss coach who said, "Well, I, I, if you'd like to try, uh, like to try your hand at driving, one of these things. We have a bobsled driving school in a few months, and and uh, and we'd love to have you. And then you know, when you start getting involved and things start going pretty well, then you think about putting a team together and think about uh, doing different competitions. And then, before I knew it, uh, two years later, I was." Uh, Qualified for the Olympics, and so, uh, but I never thought that I'd uh, be able to to uh, take up a new sport and, and be able to go that far with it. You ultimately carried the Olympic flag in three uh, mm -hmm. Olympics, um, but describe the emotion of that very first time carrying the flag. It, it was very emotional, uh, not only because you're you you realize that you're at the big the biggest sport and cultural event of the planet uh, and you're walking into a, a stadium full of people uh, that are cheering you on but you realize that you're that you're representing your country and uh, and uh, that a lot of people at at home are watching you how exciting was living with all the other olympians when you were in uh, competition. I mean, it seemed to be from reading the reports that everybody thought, oh, you know, he's royalty, he's not going to be living with all the other athletes. And you're like, what do you mean? I'm right here with the guys. I knew the importance that an Olympic village had, and, and I wanted to be a part of that experience. And there was 
there was no way I, I wasn't going to uh, be right there in the middle, firstly to, to, to stay with the team, but, but also to, to get that experience of meeting athletes and officials from all over the world and to uh, engage with them and to, you know, to get the full, get the full effect and, of, of an Olympic experience. And I think it's, uh, I, I'm, I'm sorry for, for, for those athletes who, uh, for practical reasons, did not stay in Olympic Village mm -hmm. and, and did not have that experience. This, so this had to be an exciting time of your life. I mean, you're an Olympian, you're royalty, you're single, you're like dating models. Um, how, not like, only. Uh, what? No, I didn't only date models. No, right. <laughs> um, but like going back to that time, like what did you think of all the attention that was paid to your personal life back then? You know, I, I didn't think uh, didn't think too much about it. It didn't really impede me that 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 much. I, I tried, you know, to go about my own way and what I thought was uh, was right. It, it's only when uh, media becomes too obtrusive and 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 too uh, wants, wants to dwell too deep into your personal life that then you get uh, uh, you put up a. a Protection and, and uh, will find the uh, find your find your space to be able to protect yourself and and those that are important to you uh, around you and it's it's still the same today uh, but uh, I never whatever I did I didn't try to do it for for any any sort of publicity and right. I didn't, certainly didn't. I would have chosen a different sport if I if I wanted to be publicized. Bob, Bob Sutting, you know, but back then it was a very small time sport right. and it only really existed at, uh, at an event like like the Olympic Games, and it probably wouldn't wouldn't survive if, if it wasn't on the Olympic program. Over the years, mm -hmm. growing up, you played soccer, javelin throwing, handball, judo, swimming, tennis, skiing, rowing, sailing, squash, bobsled. Um, how much of a desire growing and, up? And did, modern pentathlon. And modern pentathlon. Which is, as you know, a combination of five different sports, uh, fencing, uh, swimming, riding, shooting, and running. And so I did that toward the end of my bobsled career, and, and I just did a few fun charity competitions, but it's, a, it's, a, it's an incredible sport. I'd, I'd always wanted to try it, uh, and it's, uh, it's very demanding. You solicit different, uh, of course, different uh, muscles and different, different uh, uh, mindsets of uh, different sports, and, and, and it's, uh, but it's very interesting to try to combine all of these uh, all, all of these activities. How much of a desire growing up did you have to be a pro athlete? I never really thought about being a pro athlete, but but I wanted to see as as far as I can go, and, and I probably could have dedicated myself more to to a sport like bobsledding a, a little earlier on, and I probably would have would have had better results. But um, I wanted to try a lot of different things, and and I was curious about. Uh, whole array of different sports and of course a lot of them I was able to try and, and was able to have a certain competitive level.